Hey everybody, this is Bandor again in our multi-part series of videos exploring how to build something in Blender, then use Substance Painter to texture it, and how to bring all of that into Second Life and make it work really well. So where we just left off is we have just exported all of our ambient occlusion maps, our AO maps, for our model, and we're going to bring the model and the AOs into Second Life and combine them together and see the result. And the result should look a lot like this chair that we see right here with all the shadows applied. So in order to do that, we got to cancel out of this, and then we're going to switch over to Second Life. So here we are in Second Life, waiting for me to do something. And I'm going to import the mesh. So you go up to Build, Upload, Mesh Model. And I put it in the Documents, scroll down here, Date modified. Oh, I'm on the wrong. That's D drive. Sorry. Documents. There it is. Wood cloth chair six D A E file. And pick that one. We're going to open. That brings up the upload model uh, panel. You can see our model is there. That's the one that we want to bring in. Um, and it's showing up here. And then you have, that's the high uh, poly version of it. Then it's going to have three other levels of detail. And I didn't create three different or four different models. I could have done that. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, but I'm lazy and I don't do that. So if I were to just import it as it is and not change anything, um, it's going to be really big, first of all. So under Upload Options, you can see how big it is. It's 3.4 meters by 3.4 meters. That's way too big because I didn't scale my model in Blender correctly. Uh, so let's cut that down by 0.5. And you'll see now when it comes in, it's going to be 1.7 meters, which I think is much closer to what I want. Uh, it'll get close, and then we can scale it in Second Life when we need to. Um, but let's go back over here. So if I were just to do that, go ahead and click Calculate the Weight and the fees, and it's going to tell me how many prims it would be when it is imported. And it's pretty primmy as it is. So you can see right here under land impact, it says it would take 85 li. So that's 85 prims to, to have that chair, and nobody would buy it because that's the primmiest chair in the history of Second Life. So we need to cut that down. And the way to do that is... Uh, you can specify the number of triangles to have for these three different levels of detail. And trial and error has shown me that uh, the numbers for this type of model, let's try 1,000 here, 250 here, and 100 here. And now when I calculate the weights and fees, you'll see it'll be substantially less. If I put those numbers to be too small, what happens is once I upload the model into Second Life, when you move your camera away from it or you're standing f away from it, you'll see the shape of the model break down. Um, as, you, as you step further and further away, it breaks down smaller and smaller. If that happens too quickly before you move far away from it, it's very obvious and it doesn't it's not appealing. It doesn't look good. So you don't want that to happen. So you need to pick a resolution that's kind of a happy medium. Small enough to get the prim count down, but it doesn't break the model uh, or doesn't decompose the model when you, uh, when you just cam away a little bit. So I found that these settings give me what I want for that. So 11.7, so 12 Li is reasonable for the chair. So I'm going to go ahead and hit upload, and it's going to pull that into my inventory. Um, I could have renamed it here. This is the name that it's going to come into Second Life with. I forgot to do that. So in my inventory, it's going to show up as arm brace left. So let's drag my arm brace left to the ground and see what it looks like. And there it is. And you'll notice that it's kind of floating in midair a little bit. I'm not quite sure why it did that. Um, but it did, so I'm going to lower that down until it's just visible. Also, now you see the colors that I had put into Blender for my materials. Remember I told you you didn't need to color it? You don't need to because it never really shows up 
until you get here and then I don't really want it to be colored that way here so um, there was no need to color up my materials but anyway so let's get rid of that we're gonna go to the texture tab and click white and make it all white now you can see it's very white and it's very plain it has no shadows at all except uh, SL is generating a little bit of shadows for me uh, but it doesn't really look good it doesn't look it certainly doesn't look like what it looks like here um, which is our goal. Our goal is to make it look in Second Life what it looks like here. And the way to do that is we have to get the ambient occlusion files and apply them. So we're going to go to Build, Upload, Bulk, then we're going to go to the directory where it put them. And I only want the AO files. So I could go in here and pick them out one by one and load them in that way. But if I was smart, I would delete these and go back to Substance Painter and re-export them. But it's easy enough just to do this. AO, 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 AO. I think that's all of them. And then hit open. And now it's going to load them into my inventory. And that's going to take a while. So I'm going to pause this video while it's uploading and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, it has finished uploading all of the files to Second Life so I can start working with it. Uh, they're right here in my inventory, and I'm going to just basically apply the AOs as the diffuse material for this model. Uh, if you've ever bought a prefab piece of furniture, that's what, that's what they've done. They've taken the AO and they've put it on the model as the diffuse so you can see it. Um, you don't need it. It's not going to ever be used in that format on the furniture, but it, it allows you to see what it what it would look like. Um, you use them for other things. You use them in Photoshop to create some textures, and, uh, and I'll show you how to do that uh, in another video. But I usually, I usually do my texturing in Substance Painter, but you can do it in Photoshop using these AOs that we generated. But anyway, let's go ahead and stick these on. So you just drag them on. So we're gonna say, okay, this is slat right, goes on, slat right. Slat left goes on slat left. Side right is this piece here. Side left is that piece. Chair shadow is that one. And we're going to fix this. As you can see, it's the shadow is on a white background. It's not transparent. I have another video that we're going to do after this one to show you how to fix that. Uh, seat cushion, legs right, legs left. The back brace, which is this part right here. And then the front is this part right here, the back cushion, the back is that part, then we're going to do armchair right, I'm sorry, arm right, arm left, and arm brace right, which is that little piece, and arm brace left, which is that piece. Now you can see we are done, and it looks just like it did in Substance Paint. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to fix this uh, floor shadow so that it looks correct. Uh, but that's all we're going to do in this video, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part five.